Southern Illinois has the last four Valley titles and four straight NCAA appearances. The Creighton Blue Jays have been to the postseason seven straight years. Southern Illinois has won 32 consecutive home games, the nation's longest home court winning streak, and Creighton thinks they have a team tonight to break the streak. The Valley, the nation's best non-BCS conference, is in your home tonight. Egyptian dogs are barking tonight in Little Egypt. Southern Illinois trying to protect a 32-game home court winning streak, the longest in the nation, against their bitter rival, the Creighton Blue Jays. State Farm Insurance proudly presents our Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week, Southern Illinois hosting Creighton. Hi, everyone. I'm Mitch Holtis, the voice of the Valley, along with Coach Charlie Spoonauer. These two teams don't like each other much, and a lot of streaks on the line. You got more streaks tonight than Grandma's windows, I'm going to tell you for sure. And if you can't have fun tonight here, Mitch, you're just not trying. The Creighton Blue Jays trying to deal with losing Nate Funk. Johnny Mathis has stepped in nicely. Mathis has done a great job. He can shoot threes. There's what he does that makes him good also. He gets steals and gets runouts. He doesn't have to get everything against a set defense. Of course, he's going to be matched up tonight with Tony Young, and they're going to be against each other. Their numbers are almost identical. And shooting the three, same, but both get steals, both can put it on the floor, and both can guard you. All right, let's check in now as we take a look at Tony Young, who has really stepped up his game for the Salukis. Charlotte, check in with your National City keys to the game, brought to you by National City, where they want to make sure that banking is simple for lives that aren't. Well, if you're Creighton, you do not want to turn the basketball over. 19 turnovers. If Creighton has 19, they lose games. 19 is what the, usually the Salukis force. Second shots, if, if the Salukis, four and five men get to the boards, big trouble. Interior design right now, the Salukis are thinking about how can we get some points out of the interior players and creating opportunities, not just out of your offense, but other ways to score. Second shots, steals, etc. That's what they're looking for. And yet tonight we also have a, ba a battle of the Valley's best point guard, Plebes. Two freshmen at point for these teams. Josh Dotzler on the left. He's been outstanding, and Brian Mullins equally as so as the point guard for Southern Illinois. Since he's been the starter, the Salukis have won 13 games. The Salukis and the Blue Jays in a real battle tonight. They packed them in here tonight. We're at SIU Arena in Carbondale, our State Farm Game of the Week. The nation's longest home court winning streak is on the line in an all-time Valley home winning streak. On the line tonight is Southern Illinois Entertaining Creighton. Let's check our Bud Light lineups. Brought to you by Bud Light. Great taste for your great times, Bud Light. We talked about the guards, but watch this battle in here on the front line between Watts, Falker, Sean Tolliver. Whoever wins that battle might very well win this game up front. And the Dean of the Valley coaches, Dana Altman, brilliant in his 12 years at Creighton. Third, next year's the 100th year of Valley basketball. Dana Altman is third in Valley history with 231 wins, eight straight postseason appearances. His counterpart on the other side, the seventh youngest Division I coach, Chris Lowry, 33 and a half years old last year. Led the Salukis in his first year to a Valley championship. They went one and one in the NCAAs as an assistant here, part of the Sweet 16 in 2002. Let's take a look at our series history brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Sirius is unbeatable radio. All radio is not created equal. Creighton leads the overall series. The Salukis lead here in Carbondale, but here's the big note. As good as Creighton has been, the Salukis have won the last four meetings in this series. Well, the Salukis have won the last meetings against a lot of people. And winning in this place, you have to have a pretty good memory to think back to the last Valley team was that won, and I believe Chris told us it was a very good Tulsa team. It was the last Valley team. 50, what did he say? He'd been 56 games. Chris Lowry has won 56 straight games in this building as a coach or player. And Tulsa was the one that beat him. That beat him. Now, the last time they lost here to a Valley team, Chris wasn't here. That was Evansville that beat him in uh, February 24, 2001. Now take a look at the rookie coaches and what he did in his rookie year. It's a pretty good list of guys, Spoon, but his first year he was brilliant at 27 and 8. 
there's no doubt. He came in, and this is this is a job, Mitch, and as you well know, that has rolled over four coaches and has done it, and there's been very little drop, if any, in any part of the game. And the defense that Chris Lowry has, has kept in place is as good as I've seen in a long time. Chris Lowry, you saw him last year's Valley Coach of the Year. The year before, Matt Painter, now at Purdue, was the Valley Coach of the Year. The year before, Bruce Weber went to the national title game at Illinois. He was the Valley Coach of the Year. And yet you got Dana Altman on the other side. He's been Valley Coach of the Year numerous times. And he's been a coach, what, 20 years? And 10 of those years, he's been either National Coach of the Year, Conference Coach of the Year, Regional Coach of the Year. Pretty good, I'd say. You saw the streak. Gonzaga and Southern Illinois tied at 32 straight home wins. Right behind them, Illinois at 31. The first possession of the game will belong to Southern Illinois. Charlie, game on in the Valley. It's always interesting to see how it starts and who people are looking for. This is Jamal Tatum. He's playing banged up with a bad knee and a bad ankle. Hurt in his last game against Illinois State. Man defense, as you might expect. Mathis got the steal and then travel with it at midcourt. Great steal on. That's what Mathis does, Mitch. He makes himself so available. He is so quick. He gets in passing lanes. Almost gets away right here. Creighton is on a six game winning streak. And there you go. Two plus steals in the last six games. Creighton's going to need him tonight to get some easy breakout baskets. Both of these teams will guard you. They'll get right in your jersey and be there all night. Tate him to the basket. For a guy with a bad leg, he got there pretty quickly. He's second in the Valley in scoring, though his numbers have dropped off as conference play has commenced. But he gets the first bucket of this game. Dotes low to the basket, forced that one. Freshman did a good job defensively that time in talking about Miller and gets, he gets to the ball so well. Young has been just red hot lately. Tony Young with the three. It's 36th of the year. He had 30 against Bradley. He's been lighting it up. If he gets off on a roll and starts shooting the basketball, it makes life awfully tough for Clayton. Now, how, why has Southern Illinois been so good defensively? Charlie, it's amazing. And there's seven league wins. They have averaged, allowed on the average, 47 points. If you look, defensive pressure starts everything. And anytime there's been a screen so far tonight, there's been a double team involved. And they are great at help defense. There's another double, and that's with big on little, and another steal. Walker with the steal to Young, and Walker with the flush. Southern Illinois got the first seven points of the game. Well, the word to heat him up on defense was used today by Chris Lowry, and I think you have just seen it. And Mathis, Young loses it, or makes him lose it out of bounds, but uh, Creighton will keep it. Now watch the screen here, and Dotzler in jail. But well, he's got a problem in trying to throw over that. Nice play here. Falker gives the ball up, continues to run. You can't say enough about guys who's got enough sense to run. They're going to get baskets. Quickly, post guys are on the floor. Creighton needs a bucket. They have yet to get a good look. Defense has been very strong, and there you see Young on Mathis. I'm telling you, Southern Illinois is like smothering you on defense. A reminder at halftime, our Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital halftime report where our love for kids just keeps on growing. Charlie Spooner, I'll talk with both coaches, several features, and more. These two teams tied for first in the Valley, a four-way tie for first at seven and two in the nation's best, fifth best conference. Shaw's gonna get free throws. Fouls. Excuse me, Mitch. Shaw has shot the three so well it forces it forces Creighton to react to him and react quickly. And then when they do, he's good enough to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. And when you foul him, it's almost automatic, almost 90 percent. Charlie Creighton has had four offensive possessions. They have three turnovers and a miss, and that was a not a real good look from Dokes for when he forced one. Well, Dana Altman said if, if they get towards 19 turnovers, they're in deep trouble and the three this quick. 
Rogers. Has to make you nervous. Shaw's 87% at the line, third in the conference, but splits a pair. And Porter goes right to the rack. Tolliver works hard on a tip try. Young against Oatsler. Tony Young with five early. He's averaging 16 in conference games, first in the league. Wasn't the easiest shot in the world right there. Young went ahead with it and made it for him. Creighton is down 10 nil. Watts is good from three. Dotzler and Mullins, and Mullins has the foul. Mitch Mullins, for a, for a young man that's not the most fleet of foot, is always around the ball. His reaction to the ball and knowing where the ball is going is just excellent. Southern Illinois has yet to miss a shot. Creighton has yet to get a good shot. Anytime it's hard to pass and catch, makes everything else just that much more difficult. Porter calls timeout. He was trying to avoid a five count. Mathis and Dotsler were trying to get open. Well, that's not a steal, Mitch, but that's the next best thing. You force the timeout, and you get your crowd up, which you don't have to worry about getting them up because they haven't sat down yet. The Nutter Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete is Southern Illinois' Jamal Tatum, junior from Jeff City. Missouri is the first team All-Valley Scholar. Second time All-Conference selection. Tatum carrying a 3-7 in speech communications here in Carbondale. Academics are important to the Valley. Let's salute Jamal Tatum. Today's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete. I'm telling you, little Egypt is going crazy right now. Great feels like they had the wind knocked out of them. Well, that dance team is not going to go anywhere soon. They're not going to be on Dancing with the Stars. But they're having fun. That's what this is all about. Anytime you can get this many students, we've got both end zones full of students. You've really got an atmosphere. This game very close to a sellout. This arena seats right around 10,000. Valley's been drawing very well. Watts for three. And Creighton with a set play to get the three. Chris Lyers got to be upset about that because we watched today. He worked on that very play and covering that very action right there. Tatum, 15 to shoot. This is Mullins, the outstanding freshman point guard from Dannersville, Illinois. Young. Falker with the work underneath on the offensive boards. Wise decision by Falker. Didn't have a shot. Tatum off. Good check off and a rebound for Creighton. Mathis with a good check off on Mullins. And Creighton's doing just what you have to do when you're having problems. They defended well and got a stop, and that gives them a chance to get back in this game. It's 10-3 right now. Porter can create offensively. Has that one stuck right back at it. That's two blocks already also tonight to go with all the other things. Tatum in a little too deep. Walker's already got one dunk. Watts with the board. Creighton was trying to get something easy. We played nearly five minutes in Southern Illinois. Trying to get their 33rd straight home win here in Carbondale is putting the heat on Creighton. Southern Illinois had the first 10 points of the game here in front of this raucous crowd. 10-3. Salukis. Valley basketball brought to you by Aeropostal. Athletically inspired, comfortable clothes at reasonable prices. Only at Aeropostal. For store locations, go to the website, aeropostal.com, providing scholarships through sponsorship. Chris Lowry, an assistant with Bruce Weber here at Southern Illinois, and then also at the University of Illinois, came back to be the head coach here when Matt Painter left here to go to be the head coach at Purdue. 41 straight Valley home wins for the Salukis. If they win tonight, it's an all-time Valley record. And this league's been around 100 years. New players on both sides. It's always interesting to see how they get caught up in the game. Young on Mathis. He gets it off just in time. 
And Mullins with the board. Anytime Falk was involved in the screen to this point, he's been a doubler. He has doubled and forgotten his man completely. Both teams going to the bench here a little bit. Young, however, has it rejected by Anthony Tolliver. 32 blocks now. That's third in the battle. It's good when you've got a big guy that can step up and do that. Of course, what that, anytime big men are blocking shots, there's always the opportunity to dump the ball off to their man. Anthony Tolliver, one of the most improved players in this league. We talked about him during the Bradley broadcast in Omaha. He has improved exponentially for this Creighton team. And they've had to have the improvement with Nate Funk, their All-American, out for the season. I'm assuming that means he's getting pretty good. Yeah, he's getting there. <laughs> Young, a deep three with four on the shot clock. Creighton returns the defensive favor, Spring. That's been the, the change so far. It's a subtle one, but offense is still hard for Creighton, but their defense is keeping the game right where it was. As we said, Mitch, hard to run an offense because there's just absolutely so much pressure on you. See, there's the, there's the double team by Falker's position. That time it's Foster that did the double. Four to shoot. Moats is good from three, usually, but he misses it. But Jeffrey Day chases down the offensive board. Mathis with a good clean look. Hidma with the board. Mathis will get free throws on the inside take. That's one thing that you need to do if you're capable of, capable of doing it. Anytime someone pressures you, you've got to take the ball, go towards the basket, not always to shoot for yourself, but to make passes and make other people available. Here's a look at Johnny Mathis, 80% at the line. He's only missed one free throw in his career against Southern Illinois, 10 of 11. You know, Moats, Jimmy Moats is so good from three. Here's a look at Jimmy Moats, the senior from Lincoln, Nebraska. Moats, 21 threes this year. He's been great from three in his career. He's never hit a three against Southern Illinois. He is 0 for 8 from three in his life against Southern Illinois. Southern's quickness, I think, bothers not just Moats, but a lot of people because they react so well to the open man. Mathis in the book, two straight free throws, and Sneaky Creighton here with five and answer to cut that early 10 0 lead to 10 5. In the zone here by Creighton. Kind of a matchup look here, Charlie, a little bit by the Blue Jays. Almost, if there's any movement at all, it turns almost into man. Yeah, it looks like man now. Underneath, Shaw can't handle the dish, but it's off Creighton. That's what we were just talking about, Mitch. Most saw uh, the reaction by the big people of Creighton. Anytime you penetrate the big people coming to block, great chance to be an assistant. Inbounds play mishandled, but Creighton touched it last. And Southern Illinois will get another crack at it. How about this blue ribbon officiating crew? There's Dave Brucker. And how about this guy? He's working somewhere every night, isn't he? Steve Wilmer. The most promising player in the history of A-Rod McCutcheon's team at Evansville. Promised coach McCutcheon everything. Just wouldn't do anything. Who's Ted Hillary? Where'd Ted play? I don't know if he's referees all over the world and he's good. Sean missed the shot. This is going to irritate the Creighton bench because Southern Illinois getting some second chance opportunities. There you see the irritation from 12-year coach Dane Hall. You see Coach Altman's not complaining to the officials. He's complaining to his players, which is good. Since Creighton called timeout at the 10 16 30 mark, Southern Illinois has yet to score. This is off day, and Southern Illinois still has it. But we've got another block by Creighton. That was my day here. Well, he's had his share of block shots, too. Started his career at the University of Washington. Salukis have been stuck on 10. Four minutes, Charlie, but they got the guy they want to shoot. Yeah, yeah. Started with the dribble penetration by the freshman. A great job by Shaw to pass the ball out to get the three. 
Tony Young, 24 at Missouri State. We mentioned 30 against Bradley. 37 threes this year now for Tony Young. Mathis sets up Motes. Still no career threes. It's a rare two-point attempt. Oh. Motes has only hit one two all year. They decided he was going to shoot that mitts no matter what. And there are people standing open. That's a great time to toss it out and get a three. And Young, little dribble pop. Yeah, the other thing Southern Illinois does is gets back and transition defense. Moats is going to keep trying until he hits one. There you go. His first career three-pointer ever against Southern Illinois. Now one of nine in his career. Four new, look at this. We're going to put a stop line up at that scores table. We've got four for each team getting ready to come in. For a good score, Shaw is very, very unselfish. Very unselfish. Mullins, more of a distributor, and sets up Shaw. Foster trying to chase it down, but it's out of bounds to Southern Illinois. Jimmy Motes had been shooting blanks against Southern Illinois until this shot, and Creighton has weathered the storm. They trail only by five. Still 10.48 left to go first half. Southern Illinois leading Creighton 13 to 8, 10 48 left to go in the first half. Southern Illinois one for eight in their last attempts and a three by Anthony Tolliver. Now he's hit five this year and the Blue Jays living by the three. Three threes and two free throws. You have to have a two point field goal but they're within two points. Southern Illinois resets. We've been bragging about the Saluki defense, but Creighton has stayed in it with their defense. Tatum gets deep on the dribble. Two baskets for Tatum, and both have been after good penetration, just like that. Tolliver working against Tony Boyle. And Tolliver is going to get the foul trying to get it back from Tony Boyle. That's the second foul on Anthony Tolliver. Let's take a look at our Valley standings. Brought to you by Ameren, legion of men and women, making sure the nightlights in the neighborhood flicker to life when called upon. Visit Ameren.com to learn more. 365 and then some. Charlie, there's your log jam. A four-way tie for first. Northern Iowa, Wichita State, Creighton, and Southern Illinois. Well, this game tonight changes a little bit of that look. And I have a hunch there's going to be movement and, and settling for another three weeks. Austin Brooks in the game now, a walk-on senior. In fact, Southern Illinois has no scholarship seniors right now. This is still a young team. And 14 wins over Walker Walk with it. Creighton had done so much better the last five-minute segment, no turnovers. Now they've picked one up this segment, so they have four right now. Dean Allman wishes he could stop play every time he gets the ball when he's had set play opportunities and scores. Out of a turnaround right in the media break. There's a steal. Entrance passes to the wing are just not easy to make. One, because there's pressure on the basketball, and two, because there's pressure on the guy trying to catch it. Tatum, a little wild. Jeffrey Day with the board. You know, when talking with the Creighton staff today, many times point guards or the guard will get blamed for the turnover, but the wing player's got to get open in those situations. Look at that. I think that's not a group of people around you there. And a bucket hit as Nick Porter's got his first basket of the game. And the first two for Creighton. Credit Dotsler for being in a double team, getting out of the double team, maintaining his poise to get the assist. 
15-13, Southern Illinois. 8.29 left in the half. Clemens, a redshirt freshman with it. Porter nearly picked him. Nailed ball. It's going to Creighton. Creighton's got the arrow, and Creighton can tie or take the lead with this possession. Dane Altman's team in a 13-5 run of the last 8-20. And they did have a storm go through. There's a bunch of hailstones over there, but they're getting out of the cellar and came out and go, hey, you're only two down. Well, there's only two starters on the floor right now for the Salukas. You think the Doppler radar was going off over there when they were down 10 to nothing? <laughs> And you can see where the offense is being run. Now it's finally entered, but it's been tough to run the play. Porter got underneath. Days over the back of Falk. And a break on the floor. First foul on Jeffrey Day. Southern Illinois continues their big time defense, trying to get their 42nd straight Valley win at home. Creighton is battling back. Southern Illinois leading 15-13, 7.53 left to go first half. We call it the nation's best non-BCS conference. We have evidence, Charlie. Look at this, conference RPI. Anytime you're ranked as high as the Missouri Valley Conference is right now, you have to feel good. I realize we're in January, Mitch, but you have to feel good about your chances to get into postseason play. Each one of these BCS conferences, the Valley the only exception. And five in the RPI top 35. This is even more impressive. The Valley with five. Tied with the ACC. <laughs> now, I'm going to throw something else at you. In the last six years, the con if the conference is rated fifth or higher, they've had at least four bids to the big dance. I don't see any reason to change it this year. Hell ball that's going to go to Southern Illinois. A little change in defense that time by the blue shirts. And the visitors did a good job of double teaming and changing the pressure look. That time the Salukis didn't react well to it. Dan Altman's always been known to bring some different defenses, different pressure. You don't see as much 90 foot defense this year from him, though, Charlie. Clemens, good ball fake. Walker strong to the basket and Day Fowler. Well, this isn't the worst thing that ever happened if you're Creighton to put Falker on the line because it's been quite an adventure for him. 40% free throw shooter, 8 for 20 at this point in the year in conference. We watched him today, and honestly, and Chris Lowry's right here. I said, we're not leaving until he makes one. And That's you right. almost starved to death because <laughs> you're ready for lunch, see? And it gets in your mind, which it's not, this is not just a physical thing right now. This is a mental thing, and you almost get to the point where you don't want to be fouled, and I know how he feels. Good player. Oh, Real good player. He's, he's made himself a much better player, but you don't get those worry lines on your forehead when you shoot 80%. Might want to eye muff the kids, though, when he shoots it. That's big. They're going to call off school tomorrow right now. Chris Lowry's <laughs> one for two means 50%. That ups his average. 16-13, Southern Illinois. Again, several streaks on the line here. Southern has won 32 straight games here at home. Tied for the nation's longest home court winning streak. 41 straight games in the ballot. A record that has stood since the early 60s. If they win one tonight, it'll be 42 and an all-new record. Mathis, good look at a three. This game's tied. Creighton was on one side of the floor for a long time, and when you get caught on one side, you can really have problems. In this six-game winning streak coming into tonight, Mathis was 17 of 34 from three-point range. And let's remind everyone, if you joined us late, Southern Illinois had a 10-0 lead to start the game. Three different postmen have been wrestling with Falker. We're seeing our third now. Three to shoot. Shaw. Big shot with one on the buzzer. Shaw is a very good offensive player, Mitch. You almost wish if you're Chris Lowry that maybe he won't be quite so unselfish. And Nick Porter, in his attempt to be unselfish, threw it into the Southern Illinois student section. Six turnovers. Against Creighton, again, we're going to keep the eye on your 19 number. 
it's easy to turn the ball over when you're playing against the Salukis because you stand lock-legged. You're so happy you've caught a ball. Then you get lock-legged and you try to pass, and it's just hard to do. Shaw off the press break. Walker set him up. Shaw back-to-back -back buckets for the Egyptian Dogs. You've got to credit Falker. We know that he'd like to shoot the basketball in this situation. He's right over the basket. But that's a great pass. There's your difference in the game. You just saw points off turnovers. 7-0 in favor of the Salukis. Mathis trying to shake Young. It's not easy to do. Got to feel like Young or, you and Young are pretty much together. Porter tries to set up Manny Gaku at Gaku inside, and Gaku couldn't finish. Dane Altman trying to buy some time for his post. Both Jeff Rudin and Anthony Tolliver have two fouls apiece. And Manny Gaku trying to uh, fill his role as the pivot man for Creighton. And right now, Porter had switched off and had Falker. Tatum uses a double screen to find Young. And Gaku with the rebound. away from the ball. This is going to be on Falker, and that's his first run at halftime. We'll have our Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital halftime report for our love for kids. This keeps on growing. Falker looks as though just watching him, that he might be tiring just a little bit, Mitch. And he's had three different players to wrestle with, and that's pretty tough duty. Three team fouls on Southern Illinois. Now make it four. And Johnny Mathis gets shot to the head. They may only be guards and six foot tall, but Young and Mathis are having a very physical confrontation. Second foul on Tony Young of Southern Illinois. Well, neither one's going to back down from the fight. And if they did think about it, they'd each have to go face their head coaches. <laughs> Yank him and throw him, throw him right back into the fracas. 20 to 16, Southern Illinois, but they had a 10 nothing lead about three and a half minutes into this game. A three in the corner way off from Breeze Ninsu. You get an open look, you need, really need to make it. You might want to wait a while though and check in the game to get the feel. Ninsu just cranked it right up there. These are two relatively young teams, honestly, when you look at it. No one's really lost it. Clemens. Falker pushed off. Sure did that time. He was on the backside where he needs to be. Ball shot from the corner. You want someone filling the backside rebound position, but Falker just got too excited with things and pushed. Great fourth to ten from three. Falker with his two fouls has to set down. St. Louis kid for the Gateway Tech. And Jamal Foster will come in and take his place in the pivot. So both coaches trying to buy a little time in the pivot from their bench. Tolliver's hit from three. A little set shot. Oh. Banks it in. You know, he did this against Xavier. He had 26 points and 10 boards against Xavier and hit some threes in that game. Well, on that occasion, defense slow to come out. Tatum elevates over Tolliver. But there's a foul now trying to get the board on Jamal Foster. And Creighton's within one point. Anthony Tolliver <laughs> banks it in in Little Egypt. His team down one. That's why they hang him up there. Southern Illinois leading Creighton 20 to 19, 334 left to go in the half. After Southern had a 10-0 lead to start the game, when Metro Sports takes its television cameras on the road, it considers these hotel properties its home away from home. Please call these hotels or visit the websites of these properties when following your favorite team. 20 to 19, but if you joined us late, Southern Illinois came out blazing to a 10-0 lead in the first three and a half minutes 
of the game. And for Dana Altman, five of his six field goals have been from three-point range. One off the glass, it was a little fortuitous, I'd have to say. <laughs> Only one from nine for two-point range. There's a bump here by Foster, and that's going to put Creighton in the one and one. This has been, for a game that's as contested as it is, we played 17 minutes, you've got seven fouls on one team and five on the other, and that's really not, that's not excessive at all. This Creighton streak, 388 games with a three. In fact, you can extend it. They've had at least two threes in 377 straight games. They got two from Tolliver tonight, one from Watts, one from Motes, and one from Mathis. And Dutchville, I love his game at point as a freshman, but the free throw shooting has got to improve. We saw him go one for two three straight times in a uh, kind of a crazy ending against Bradley. Well, in the conference, he's finally picked it up to, to almost 75 percent, but that one didn't look very good. And he's 67 percent for the year. And now in his second game on television, he hits the front end of a or misses the front end of a one and one. Solenoid continues with the lead. Mullins, he gets fouled by Mathis trying to pick it. Ball's out there, and I'm sure John Mathis thought he could just get the thing, but Mullins is, a very, Mullins is a very clever player. He doesn't get he doesn't get too fast. He plays at his own pace, and he's got an idea of what he's trying to do. That's the beauty of him. We were talking about Dan Altman finding Dotzler at point guard. We've got to give Chris Lowry a lot of credit to find this Mullins kid. And he said he knew it right away. He saw him playing in the Chicago area. And there's a foul underneath on Creighton. And again, Southern Illinois going to the board. We give Chris Lowry credit to find this Brian Mullins kid at point guard. This guy's bright future ahead of him at the point for this team. The two point guards we're looking at tonight are really, really going to be fine players. They're going to be great to build around for the coaches. Third foul on Jeffrey Day. And Wesley Clemens goes to the line where he's three for 11 for the year. Gaku back in for the Blue Jays. Clemens has got a great basketball body. You can tell he's going to be a very good player for he's done. These two teams have done a very good job. Of Clemens splits a pair of redshirting players. There's Boyle coming back in for SIU. These two teams have both redshirted a lot of players. In fact, they're doing it again this year where they really use the five to four. These, both these coaches are, are very optimistic people, and they've got these teams. They don't worry about who's not playing or what's going wrong. They just get out and play and just make the best of things, and that's, that's the way it ought to be. Good post defense by Shaw, and then he turns it right back to Pierce Hibma. Dotzler way out of control and ties the game with a scoop shot, his first bucket. I think Dotzler would have preferred to pass to someone but no one was available. That little Jason Kidd to it. 21-21 tie, just under two minutes remaining in the first half. With Young down with fouls, you almost think that the Tatum probably is going to step up now. Second tie of the game. In the corner, Tatum with a good look in rhythm. And that's the logical player to step up right there because he is so capable of doing that. Playing on a bad knee and bad ankle. Saluki's with a two point lead, 90 seconds to go in the half. Both teams with excellent defensive first halves. Hibma in trouble. Boyle makes it hard on him. This is going to go out of bounds to Southern Illinois off Hibma's shoe. Clemens and Boyle, two freshmen, got Hibma in trouble down on the baseline. Valley fans, make sure to Visit Springfield, Missouri for the 06 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Tournament. We call it Hoops in the Heartland, March 9 through 12. Check the number at the middle of the screen, 417-836-7678. Also, for everything there is to do and see in Springfield, Missouri during the tournament or any other time, log on to springfieldmissouri.org. Call toll-free, 800-678-8767. Back-to-back buckets. Tatum able to slither inside to get two. 
And a four-point lead for Southern Illinois. To the basket. The scoring is Mathis. Getting a driving lane and a rare easy two against the suffocating Saluki defense. Shot clock, game clock, three second differential, nearly four seconds, about three and a half seconds. Mitch, big play here at the end of the half. You want to shoot the thing and make sure that Creighton doesn't get a look on the other end. Again, about two and a half seconds different in the shot clock and game clock. Tatum trying to create. He's been on fire. That's three in a row. Jamal Tatum, he's got ten. A look by Mathis. Off balance for three. Missed it. Trying to draw the foul and didn't get it. And Southern Illinois started off with a 10-0 run. And Creighton came battling back to tie it twice. Southern Illinois leading Creighton at halftime, 27-223. Southern Illinois, you see, undefeated when leading at halftime this season. Creighton on the road, trailing at halftime, is 0-3. We'll be back and check in with our Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital halftime report. But let's break as Creighton rallying, but still trailing by four to Southern Illinois. Back at SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois, Southern Illinois, trying to get its 33rd consecutive home win, the longest streak in the nation, leading Creighton 27-23 at halftime. Let's check in now with our Mercy Health plans for the second half. Charlie Spoonar with Chris Lowry of the Salukis. Chris, the defense is absolutely excellent. you got to like the way Tatum played at the end. He really, really bailed you all out. Right, he made some individual plays. I think defensively we're getting some things done, but we're still not getting it totally how we want to play, but I will take it. Take it for sure. Thanks. See you next time. Here in Carbondale, our Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital halftime report brought to you by Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital, where our love for kids just keeps on growing. 27-23, Southern Illinois with the lead at halftime. Six straight points by Jamal Tatum to end the half. But you got to weigh the admire, admire Creighton and the way they battle back. Well, the, the way the game started, it goes 10 zip, and you think this thing's going to be a runaway. Creighton, with their defense, keeps the game organized, keeps themselves in the game. Nice comeback by Creighton. And then at the end, Tatum just takes the game over, though, and out, but it's still just a four point game. This thing could swing back either way. Southern Illinois, though, so good defensively, but you know Creighton is too on the defensive end. They're just different. Southern is a little is a little more aggressive. They do more double teaming. They knock the ball loose more. They, but exactly what you're saying, the defense, the block shots are on Creighton's end. It's amazing to me how well both these teams play. This is a heck of a game. And again, the way this league plays, good defense and good coaching, why it's the best non-BCS conference in the country right now. Jamal Tatum huge, the last six points of the half. His team leading by four, protecting the home court. Tonight's O'Reilly Auto Parts Millennium Moment features Southern Illinois' performance in the 2005 NCAA Tournament. Chris Lowry's seventh-seeded Salukis earned an at-large bid to the big dance and met St. Mary's in the first round in Oklahoma City. With 11 points and seven boards from Valley Player of the Year Darren Brooks, SIU prevailed 66-56, and despite 22 by Jamal Tatum, the Salukis lost their next game against Oklahoma State. Tonight's O'Reilly Auto Parts Millennium Moment. Southern Illinois leading Creighton here at halftime, 27-23. Let's check in now with Charlie Spoonauer and Coach Dean Altman of Creighton with our Mercy Health plans for the second half. Coach, rough start. Your kids did a great job coming back. The thing that concerns you was turnovers, nine points that have come off eight turnovers. Yeah, those, those eight turnovers really hurt us. We're just standing straight up and down and uh, some of our vets, you know, Dane Watts played a lot of ball for us. He's only a sophomore. He's got to handle it a little bit better. But uh, if we can handle the ball, I, you know, I think we can get back in her. It's a heck of a game, Dana. Back. back to y'all, Mitch. All right, Charlie, our chat with the coaches brought to you by Mercy Health Plans, an innovative health management company, empowering members to make healthy choices. The way we care makes all the difference. Creighton's 23 points. Again, they trail 27-23 to the Salukis. Ties a season low. 
They have the same number against DePaul back on November the 30th. But look at this. In their seven wins in conference games, this is in conference games this season, they allow 47 points total. In an 11-game winning streak, every opponent they played scored 55 points or less. That hadn't happened in 60 years, so it's no real surprise that Creighton's setting on its uh, halftime tied season low. Watts missing a three, and Young chases it down. Chris Lowry would have had a total fit because that's the same play that he defended for about 10 minutes today. It's already, they've received one basket out of that. I know he couldn't have handled another. He'd have flown out on the floor like a Batman. <laughs> He'd have stopped practice. It looks easy when they back off as they're doing with Falker, but that really makes your life hard because that means everybody's closing on everyone else. Take him off balance with seven on the shot clock and a steal now by Mullins. That's the thing that he does, Mitch, and you and I talked about that prior to. He doesn't get them just reaching and getting the ball. He makes smart, heady plays. He leads the Valley in steals, Spoon. He's had 24 in the last six and a half games. Well, he plans things. And his steal led to Young's three. And Tony Young with 11 points. And the Salukis all of a sudden back up by seven with Tatum's flurry at the end of the half. And Young starting this half with a triple. Young sat a good part of the first half because of fouls. Fouls will be an issue in this case. Young may did, maybe Young didn't get a triple there. Ah, they're going to say it at just a two. Wayne Holman does not mind it. Let's take a look at it now. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, it didn't seem to bother the Saluki bench. Dotzler getting trapped up top. Mentioned these two plead point guards, and then Tolliver was hoping Watts was waiting for the ball. <laughs> he was fortunate that went out off of Southern Illinois. I thought Dana made a really good point. Guys are catching the ball, standing straight up and down. And you've, you've got to be down and ready to play in this game. Mathis gets fouled on a three, and Young has got his third personal foul. <laughs> that is an unhappy coach at the Saluki bench right now. You really, really need Tony Young in the game offensively and defensively. He's just such a good player. Mullins is limping around now. Brian Mullins, a tough freshman point guard, and Mathis goes to the line to shoot three easy ones. I say easy, he's got the uh, high chart behind him. The other half of the Saluki student body, they kind of split him up. A half on each end behind the goal. With Young in foul trouble, I think Mullins' opportunity to be injured has gone by the board. He's going to have to play. No choice. No, no choice. And Young coming out of the game. Mathis has been outstanding this year. Again, if you haven't followed Creighton this year, setting at 13 and 4, 7 and 2 in the league play, they lost their All-American Nate Funk for the year with a shoulder injury. In the six games they had Nate Funk, Dana Altman's teams were three and three. Without Nate Funk, they're ten and one. I don't understand that. <laughs> a heck of a coaching job by Altman. His kids have adjusted very well. He's very near a ten count. Mullins gets over just in time. Clemens out of control, and he's fortunate that he'll get his team over to keep him. Clemens made it about 14 feet without steps being called, which is unusual. Mullins broke the trap. Three Blue Jays there. Clemens didn't quite catch this claim. Clemens wants a three. Good job of boxing out on that occasion by the Blue Shirt. Blue Jays down four to the Salukis. Two minutes into the second 20. Again, Southern Illinois protecting the nation's longest home court winning streak. If you're going to the wing on the dribble, you can just expect a lot of company. I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't either. Six to shoot. Mathis, just in time. Walker with the board, and Himba scrambling for the ball. Timeout, Southern Illinois. Give credit to Pierce Hibba. 
of the Blue Jays for battling with Randall Falker. We're going to step aside. We got a long way to go on this one and a lot to prove. Southern Illinois leading by four at home. Southern Illinois leading Creighton 29 25, 17 32 left to go in the game. Let's check the scores and schedules around the valley brought to you by Casey's General Store. A convenience store and a whole lot more. It's Casey's General Store. This is tomorrow night, a big slate, Charlie. Scary game right here if you're Missouri State. Bradley can really play, and this is a big ball game for the Bears. And then the Indiana State, Illinois State, and I assume we're still waiting to see when Moss comes back yeah. to Indiana State. Yeah, he didn't play Saturday. He played Bradley and led Bradley at halftime in Peoria. And Bradley had a great second half to come back and win that one. Mullins off balance from his dominant side and tipped in by Randall Falker. Falker was trying to make himself available for a pass. And Tolliver gets fouled by Shaw. So Creighton getting down the floor quickly after a made Southern Illinois basket. Very good idea there. Any way you can find a basket is good. Rolls with the penetration. I think he's looking but couldn't find him. Just a nice tip that time by Falker. The thing that dribble penetration does, Mitch, is it occupies more than just your defender. It makes other people help, and when they do, they don't always get back and get a body on the, on the man rebound. Well, here's what you like, is how quickly Creighton got back down the floor as Tolliver splits a pair at the line. After Falker's tip in, let's watch how quickly Creighton came back to fast break off a made basket. Well, we've talked about this, Mitch, but a great time to break, and here again is a great tip in by Falker. While everybody's clapping their hands and pointing, look, push, look up the floor, bang, look inside, no one there. And that, of course, drives coaches crazy. Tolliver hit one of two at the line, and now Creighton forces a Southern Illinois turnover, much to the chagrin of Chris Lowry. 31 26, Southern Illinois, still 16 45 to go. Mathis, Tolliver back to the line, and Falker, I believe he's got three fouls. So Southern Illinois now has inherited some foul problems. The thing that happens to you when your team dribble penetrates, everybody thinks you're, you're not coaching them. But when you're playing against a defense that's as aggressive as Southern Illinois, you have to at times put the ball on the floor and just make a basketball play. Tolliver was just at the line. He's got eight for the game. So Falker has to set down with three personal fouls. Young is already there. For Southern Illinois, now is when you want to make up some pain. Oliver, we talked about his improvement, his toughness. He's more physical, finishes plays better. Here's Nick Porter coming back in for Creighton. But there's a look at Anthony Tolliver from Springfield, Missouri. Played on his awesome Kickapoo High School teams in the Ozarks. Creighton off press break. Shaw, and he's fouled. Nice job of passing the ball up the floor by the Salukis. And a good job of drawing the foul by Shaw. And he's, as we talked about earlier, he's going to make free throws. Good court vision by Mullins. And Tolliver's drawn his third foul for Creighton. Matt Shaw never touched the rim. Day comes back in. Tolliver sits down with three fouls. Matt Shaw, he's battled some knee problems. But you like this kid too, don't you? Oh, very much. I like him because he can shoot the basketball from out on the floor, but he's also tough enough, uses his body and gets into the basket and tries to finish. So you've got a complete player there. Ooh, close to a push off. Five point, a four point lead, I should say, five point lead for Southern Illinois. And this is going to go an offensive foul against Mathis. I think that Ted Hillary, who's one of the best in the business, knew that he might have missed the first one because he said something to Chris Lowry there. He got the second one. One out of two is not bad, it's probably what he's telling him. Chris Lowry's over there reminding him. 
I think you're down one too. <laughs> Checking his ledger seat. Ten turnovers against Creighton. So your number is 19, Spoon. We're going to stay monitoring that number. Five against the Salukis. Tatum pull up three. We're going to say it's a two. Flirting with the line again. 12 points. And back to a seven point lead for Southern Illinois. Dana Altman's trying to get it across to Porter, but you have got to guard Tatum because with Young on the bench, Falker on the bench, look at him. See, that's, it's not open, but it's too open to let him out. Too much chase. 35 28, Southern Illinois. In the year 25-25, they will do a Discovery Channel special on the lost civilization <laughs> of the Egyptian dogs of Southern Illinois student section. They're enjoying a seven-point lead early in the second half with over 5,000 hotels to choose from. There's bound to be a choice hotel wherever you're headed. Book your stay at any Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Quality Sleep Inn, Clarion, Mainstay Suites, Econolodge or Roadway Inn. Call 877-240-2929 or visit Choice. SportsTravel.com and get your best internet rate guarantee. We'll see you there. Steal by Shaw. He's doing a lot of things right now for Southern Illinois. And a give back. So the Salukis taketh and giveth back. Seven point lead for Southern Illinois. They calling for it. Instead, they got Porter in the corner. That's an air ball. Now the student body will remind him of it every time he touches. Porter has not seen this defense before. And I'm sure that it's a memorable evening. Oh, foul. The game wants. Don't get caught watching the paint dry. Boom. In the old days, that was considered a good defensive play, but in the, our new era of scoring points, they don't want you to step out and charge the, the cutters. That was a full flex shoulder right into the jawbone of Jamal Taylor. And Jack Hartman was coaching here, there would have been a mass applause for that top play. Seven point. That Jack Hartman won the NIT here with a young man by the name of Walt Frazier. Another young man by the name of Dick Garrett. They look pretty good. They were pretty fair. Goats were trying to fight off the screen, and he's drawing a foul. 14 fouls now on each team in the second half. Creighton has been lurking around. No field goals in the second half. One in the first eight minutes, so this game has followed a similar trend. And Dotsa with a steal. Held ball, arrow to Southern Illinois. Tatum, who has shot the ball and scored the ball so well, now that's two turnovers and probably the last four times down the floor for him. I'm telling you, if you've got the ball, <laughs> it's not a good feeling in this game. No. Either way. Well, people, you know, take exception to you just running around acting like you know what you're doing or the lob and Creighton was ready for it another turnover. Dominic Bishop in the left hand over the easy layup. His first two points of the game. And baskets like that, Mitch, are so huge when you can get a basket without having to play against the defense or a great steal. Two in a row by Bishop. Six. Mathis with a stick back. 11 points for Creighton and Chris Lowry will bring the wrath on his team, back to back, easy baskets for the Blue Jays. That's that's the type of plays that when you're when you're working so hard, and the Salukis are, when you're working so hard to build a lead, and then turnovers give it back, that just drives you just goofy. All right, there's Bishop's first one. Now Mullins then gets picked by Dominic Bishop. Creighton with eight points now off nine Saluki turnovers. We've been bragging up Ryan Mullins, but that was a freshman mistake getting picked by the junior college transfer, Dominic Bishop. Any time in this game, and you just mentioned it a moment ago, if you've got the basketball and you get careless, you're going to get embarrassed. I don't care what player you are, 
there the team's going to embarrass. You know what this is like when you got the, remember the old tackle the guy at the ball in the backyard and the big kid throw you the ball and everybody jump on you? That's what this game's like. They throw you the ball and you're going, I don't want it. You take it. I'll steal it from you. Another turnover. Dominic Bishop is third consecutive steal. And now's the hard part. We've got a pass and catch and shoot. Creighton was down seven. A three would tie it. Jeffrey Day, and he gets a stick back. That's a, excuse me, Mitch. That's a rebound in traffic and a basket in traffic. Southern Illinois struggling handling the ball. Dominic Bishop has three state steals. 35-34, Southern Illinois at 13-28. Left to go in the game. Turnovers are like grapes. They come in bunches. And when Tatum had a couple of turnovers, it, it's catching. And then everybody makes a mistake, and all of a sudden, we got a one-point ball game. Six to shoot. Mullins. Shaw. Got it. It's two of those, Mitch. Two huge baskets by Shaw as the shot clock was running down. Didn't panic, squared up, knocked it down. In a frantic possession. Three point lead, Southern Illinois. Creighton just keeps fighting back. Mathis, good take in the lane. Days of presence right now inside. Chris Lowry wanting some. The answer is he's going to go to his bench and bring in Tony Boyle for Jamal Foster. Randall Falker's three fouls showing up here as Southern Illinois is struggling to get a board. Mathis to tie it. The box out on the other end. Open shot. If you're Creighton and Dana Altman right now, you probably like your chances to score better when you're on the defensive end. Shaw's been tough in this game, and that's a three. 17th three of the year for Matt Shaw. None bigger than that one. He's shooting from three, 58% in Valley play. Bishop stepped out. I know Matt Shaw is a, is a young player. I know he doesn't really dominate the game and all that, but he's pretty good. Man. He probably needs to think more about, about being aggressive, although probably the reason he's so good is that he picks his spots. He doesn't force the action. He just takes what the defense gives him. Matt Shaw has had seven of the last nine Saluki points. Averaging 10 a game, he's at 12 in this one to lead all Saluki scores. Actually tied with Tatum, and underneath, a rejection, but it's going to be a foul on Creighton. A goaltending, they're going to give the basket. But right now, Matt Shaw has given his team a lift, and they've needed it the most. Southern Illinois back to an eight-point lead behind Matt Shaw. Now, just before the break, there was a goaltending call on Dane Watts at Creighton. Let's take a look at it, Charlie. The basket goes to Brian Mullins. Nice penetration then by Young. Helps there. Tough call. Good officials make the call. Steve Wilmer talking to him. What they call it? He pinned it against the glass? I guess they thought he got it while it was still... On the way there, huh? Or, or after it had leveled Left off. Coming yeah. down. 1150 remaining in the game, 42-34. Creighton has been down set down 10. They battle back. Down seven, battle back. They never led, but they usually have rallied from this point. Be interesting to see right here what comes out of this. Went back to the high post play, which has been good, and the slip screen there but it's hard to pass it because of the double teams. But they got an Great. advantage there as Watts with the extra pass. And that's out of two double teams, those plays. That's 
Good defense by uh, the Salukis and very, very good offense by the Blue Jays. First two for Watts, but Creighton with an excellent extra pass, and the Blue Jays have hounded Southern Illinois when they've had the ball. Having the ball is not exactly <laughs> all it's cracked up to be. Underneath, that's Boyle. A reset for Southern Illinois. Smart play by Shaw. He gets the rebound. There's a lot of defense on him. Tatum, Young over Porter. Wow. That's at least three baskets at the end of the shot clock. That's huge. And Spoon, this is a young team. This is There's no scholarship seniors on the Southern Illinois team. And that's a carry. Dotso got it hooked on his leg. Got it hooked on his leg. Here's your play at the end. Look at the nice double team and the help. Not bad defense. Hand in the face. Ball just goes to the basket. They don't panic when it gets to single digits on the shot clock. And this, excuse me, Mitch, this, look at this. I started to say this is where the Salukis cannot generate. They, they come down, and that's an, really an unforced error right there that gives the Blue Jays a chance to get by. They've got 11 turnovers now. Impressively, though, Creighton down nine. They've had four scores out of a timeout. Creighton has. So I'm saying, Dana Allman probably feels like a football coach. He'd like to huddle up at half court and set the play up. And everybody in the <laughs> saying, who's going to throw that pass? <laughs> it's Oliver one on one. And he gets pushed by Boyle. Ever catch the ire of the student section here at Southern Illinois. And a parent or two seem to take exception to that. Time now for the state in history brought to you by the Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis. In 04 on this day, Creighton shot 80% from the field. Usually when when you do that, they did. They beat Illinois State by nine. The Blue Jays shot 59%. They shot 80% from the field in the second half. Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis, official St. St. Louis Hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference. Well, this is, this hurts the Salukis right here with. Ten minutes to go. Young picks up another foul and has to sit. So we'll keep track of this now as Young sets down at 9:56 to see what the margin of the game does here. As Southern Illinois leading 45-36, and if Creighton can make a run or Southern Illinois can hold them off. The Young and Falk are both in the seated position right now, so. Mathis over Boyle. Tough shot by Johnny Mathis. He's got 13. I think you could say tough shot 90% of the time. In this game. Uh huh. And you would, you would be correct. Oh. Tatum goes down. Now he's got the bad ankle. Jamal Tatum is battling a bad ankle and a bad knee. And he may have re injured that ankle that he's been. He turned it against Illinois State. He returned in that game, came back and had it rolled on again. He was hobbling around at practice today. He goes down hard on this ankle. Good hustle by Mathis. Mathis gets his legs into Tatum and obviously draws the foul. Tatum almost, Dana Altman could see the push off and he was hopeful of a, an offensive foul, but I believe the officials again were right. Tatum has been the Saluki that stepped up when Young has gone has gone south and been out of the game with fouls. So now look at you. Now he almost says Shaw's got to be the guy that steps up. Well, Tatum is going to go out with an injury. Young is down with three fouls. Falker is down with three fouls. Right now it's going to be Brian Mullins against the world, the freshman point guard. And honestly, watching Tatum today was the third foul on Mathis. Watching Tatum today, he was really struggling at walkthrough of just kind of hobbling around. Well, the thing that anytime you've got a, a weak ankle that you've injured, you're just on borrowed time. And then somebody, uh, that's a, a very uh, easy injury to have happen because you've got two guys trying to guard it, you know, guard and play. And he's, he's having some discomfort. He's not putting any weight on that. So Jamal Tatum with a serious ankle injury again. He's also had a knee injury on that same leg. And Chris Lowry's got to have to have 
They're a young team anyway. Now they're going to get younger than young. And he's going to have to freshman step in and against Dana Altman's team. Southern Illinois leading by seven. The guys always tell you they want to play in big games, Mitch. Tonight, everybody gets a chance. Shaw didn't want to shoot it quickly. He's smart. Plenty of time to shoot that shot. He'll get that shot again. Try to get it into Shaw and Mullins has it stolen. Twelve turnovers against the Salukis. The faces may have changed, but the defense has not. Still good defense. Tolliver whips it to Hibman. Ten to shoot for Creighton. Steal by Mullins. The Valley's leader in steals gets stripped and fouled by Hibman. And now he's got to step up and hit the free throws, but again, just a, takes a chance right there, but makes it work. Mullins. Let's be honest, Southern Illinois did not get off to the best of starts. They went to the Great Alaskan Shootout, lost a game to Monmouth, and then they lost to Alaska Anchorage <laughs> Old School, the old Sea Wolves, Division II lurking in the consolation bracket. Well, at that time, everybody thought, well, wait a minute, Southern might be off. Then Mullins started to play at the point guard as a starter. They went small with three guards. They've been 13 and 3 since then. Steals, assists. Doesn't force shots, wants his team to win, wants his teammates to be happy, was what I think Coach Lowry said. Put a new approach to the game. Eight point lead for Southern Illinois. 8.33 remaining in the contest. But Creighton has battled back all night long. They got Watts open. And an and one opportunity for Dane Watts. You mentioned the Alaska Sea Wolves lurking. Creighton is lurking also. And that's 17 fouls now on Southern Illinois. Austin Brooks committed the foul. Watts is good from three, but not so much at the line, only 56%, and misses that one. Well, Dominic Bishop is in the game, and he's been a factor tonight. He has wreaked havoc with turnovers, forcing turnovers, pushing the ball. Creighton has eight steals, three from Bishop. Six point lead for Southern Illinois. Creighton has been swatting that post entry out of it. They've done, they've done well at challenging the post entry. Mullins against Dotzler. Freshman against freshman. Dotzler wins this battle, however, Boyle with the offensive board. And credit Shaw for keeping the ball alive. Chris Lowry is looking right now. He's wondering who's going to do something. I've got to think it's going to be Shaw in just a second if there's a way to get him the basketball. The rest of this group is really green. Freshman, freshman, walk on, freshman, and Shaw, and he's a sophomore. Clemens gets the board underneath, and he gets fouled. And the man that kept the ball alive again is Shaw. I'm sure Dana Alden says who is going to put a body on Shaw. 46-40, Southern Illinois, long way to go. Chris Lowry working feverishly. His team leading 46 40 18 left to go in the game. Valley basketball brought to you by Aeropostal. Athletically inspired, comfortable clothes at reasonable prices only at Aeropostal. For store locations, visit us at aeropostal.com. Providing scholarships through sponsorship. All right, Southern Illinois had a 10-0 lead to start the game. They've had two 10-point leads, several 8-7 point leads. Creighton keeps fighting back. Now Southern Illinois has a problem. They've lost Jamal Tatum to injury. they got Tony Young in foul trouble. Randall Falker in foul trouble, but Creighton now has Johnny Mathis with four fouls. Wesley Clemens gets a bonus point for his team. He's 3 of 11 coming into the game at the foul line. Now he's 5 of 14. Well, he's going to have to play major minutes the way things are going in this game. 
Got them both. Back to an eight point lead. You can run the high screen as long as Shaw is out there, but when the other position comes out, they double. Make, it makes life awfully hard. Watts against Shaw on an ISO. Good defense by Shaw. Dokes for an open three. Dominic Bishop nearly had the tip in. Falker gets the board. Dominic Bishop has been all over the floor tonight. He didn't get the play on that occasion, but he's done a great job for Dan Altman. Still 6.30 to go. The Salukis can go up 10 with a two. I don't think this is the offensive lineup that would be chosen. Shaw, strong. Falker got the board in his jersey. Got a grab by Tolliver, and that's his fourth. Now Falker has to shoot free throws. And we mentioned before, this is not the thing that he does best. They're going to say Tolliver has. So we've got a discrepancy with the fouls here. They might have given that to Bishop. And if they did, then Tolliver has three fouls. Falker to the line. Of course, this would be an adventure. He's one of two. Stoink. There's going to be a, a thought process going through Dana Altman's mind that when Falker touch, touches the ball, put him back on the line. You know what, if you're Dan, I've seen teams when he doesn't have the ball go after him. Mathis against Mullins with the leaner. Big buck, big rebound, however, by Matt Shaw. Haven't you seen teams do that, too? Even if he doesn't have the ball, they'll go foul and put him up there. Tim Floyd used to be the best at that. Also, Kevin Stallings did it to Wichita State one day when he was Illinois State's coach. He's not done your Steal. Austin Brooks, the walk on. A walk on. It's a steal in a bucket. He's only scored eight points all year. And tied now for the biggest lead of the game at 10. Nick Porter struggles tonight. This has been a hard game for him on this case. Dane Altman gets a 30 second timeout. Watch Southern Illinois. They can defend so well. Porter just, in, just plays the ball too softly right in the passing lane, and there's the basket. Austin Brooks was playing for either Cap Alpha Psi or Mega Sci Fi last year over at the rec. He was on campus but did not play basketball and decided, I'll go out this year. He just got one of the biggest buckets of the year for Southern Illinois. Right now, a 10 point lead looks big. You just I, the way this game has gone with the ebb and flow, you know that Creighton can get back, but it's it's not easy when you're playing against a defense as good as the salute. Guess who's back? Jamal Tatum back on the bench, looking like he's with the 82nd Airborne Division. <laughs> Ten point lead. Creighton has had an answer all the time. In fact, they've scored out of the last four timeouts. High post option again. Great move by Tolliver, and it's blocked by Falker, but Southern Illinois touched it last. It's a great idea, though. Tolliver made a, a, that's a great choice because you've got two good players that you'd like to get a foul on, and if they come after you, you may get the foul, otherwise you get the load. I thought that was a good play. Watts, and he gets fouled. Creighton is in the bonus. Shaw fouled his second. Foul. 
Watts, who is such a, a good shooter from three, has struggled from the line. 0 for 1 in this game, 56% for the year, and leaves that one way short. Creighton at the line for the game, now 7 of 12. When you're on the road, you can't afford to turn the ball over one, and you must hit your free throws. Creighton's got 16 turnovers and missed five free throws. Mullins against Dotsler, the two freshmen please. Brooks, the walk on, hit the layup, but that was a little too far out. He made that shot last year for Red. I was going to say, he hit those in the right game. <laughs> oh, bad pass by Dotsler. Clemens real sped up. Gets the bucket, though, giving it back to Brooks. About three baskets we've seen today, but the ball's been passed and passed back. Credit kind of coaching for that, though. And we've also seen Southern Illinois jump in the passing lanes. Foul on the Salukis. Biggest lead of the game for Southern Illinois. They lead by 12. Chris Lowry's team has 20 points off Creighton turnovers. 52-40, Southern Illinois. Charlie Spoonar at SIU Arena. The Salukis with the nation's longest home court winning streak leading by 12. You see the reset. Both teams are headed soon to the double bonus. Johnny Mathis to the line for the Creighton Blue Jays. Now Spoon. Tony Young of Southern Illinois picked up his fourth foul at 9.56 left to go in the game. Not long after that, Jamal Tatum was hurt. And I marked it down thinking what would happen since that point. And Southern Illinois is better. That's unbelievable because they have, there's been a six minute drought and Southern Illinois has been playing guys that are not on scholarship and they are contributing. This has been a great defensive effort and they've turned their defense into offense. Mathis, two badly needed free throws for the Blue Jays. He leads the Jays in scoring with 15. 52 42, 340 remaining in the game. Young back on the floor with his four fouls. Tatum back on the floor with his bad ankle. <laughs> and the race was on to foul Falker and Hibna just about couldn't catch him in time. I think we're going to see quite a bit of that in the last three and a half. Falker's going to have to prove he can make them. Of course, the next one, next foul on both teams makes it a two shot foul. Randall Falker, that rim looks like the size of a teacup. It's, it's getting nice. smaller and smaller. And oh, he made it. Falker's got six. He's looking around now like no problem with this. He'll be given a clinic in a week if he makes both of them. Too much to ask for. Look who rebounds the ball, Mitch. Shaw with an offensive rebound and a missed free throw. Now that will drive you crazy as a coach. An offensive board on a missed free throw. Down double digits. Mullins, a, this is perils of Pauline. He's almost going to lose the ball, but he doesn't. Ten seconds to shoot. Young against Mathis. Oh, big bucket. Tony Young, Mathis in his grill. Tonya Young has hit some huge shots, and that was huge right there. 15 for Tony Young. And Tatum with the board, and he's fouled by Bishop. This was a hard possession right here, Mitch. And look at Young. Of course, he's rested because he's been watching. But nice defense by Mathis. Just hits a hard shot. 
Tatum gets two shots now 10 team fouls on Creighton. You really can't fault Mathis. You don't want to foul him. No, he did a good job. He, he stopped the baseline drive, recovered, hand up on the shot, and, and Young just hit it. Tatum good at the line. Now what are we waiting on? Tatum doesn't like the ball. He's going to throw the ball back to the umpire and get a new one. It's in baseball. You're going to rub it down. You're going to shoot this one. Boy, didn't like it. Chris Lowry, now he's got to like the way he's bench. He's, he's had walk on freshman, red shirt freshman. Anybody he could find to answer the call, help him get this 13 point lead. He's got to be just hugely proud of, of this effort, and he's got to really like this crowd. The crowd's been great for him today. Tatum, 13 points. Again, if Southern Illinois wins, it's an all time Valley record 42 straight home wins. Goats to lost this one, but the last touch by Southern Illinois. Here in Carbondale, Illinois, Mitch Holtis along with Charlie Spoonauer. Southern Illinois, the longest home court winning streak in the nation. They lead of 14 with 235 to go, and Watts with a big three. You really wonder why someone would help off Watts. That's what Chris Lauer is saying. Why? Don't let him shoot the ball. Check in now there at State Farm players of the game for Creighton and Johnny Mathis. If Johnny Mathis didn't do what he did, Creighton would have blown out, have been blown out of the building. No question about that. When, when the game was hard early, he made some huge plays and got Creighton back in the ball game. And he was responsible for helping wipe out that 10 to nothing start. You have to wonder what kind of a night Young might have had had he been able to stay out of foul trouble. These two teams are very young, but the best of the youngsters has been Matt Shaw, a sophomore, the State Farm player of the game for Southern Illinois. He does so many things, Mitch. He's got five rebounds, but we, we saw at least twice he kept the ball alive, and SIU ended up with an offensive board in a basket. He just does all the little things and doesn't make mistakes. He's just a really, really good player. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Two high RPI teams, Creighton's RPI 27 with a record of 13 and 4. Southern Illinois 26 in the RPI with a record of 14 and 5. We go right after Tatum. Now this league will celebrate its 100th year next year. The longest streaks. I want you to talk about these teams. Oklahoma State in the late 30s, early 40s. Now you're thinking I'm that old. <laughs> I didn't come out right. Now you know about that Cincinnati team in the late 50s, early 60s. I'm assuming the 36 to 42 was Mr. Ivan. It'd have to be, wouldn't it? It'd have to be Mr. Ivan. And his teams were so good and so dominant. Cincinnati. My goodness, they've gone through two two separate groups of great players. I would I would bet you that probably Southern Illinois has gone through obviously more coaches and more players probably more people have had a part in things than any than either of the other two. Tatum's got 15, Young 15, Southern Illinois a 13 point lead, 213 left. Mathis traveled. Yeah. Now look at this list. We talked about Dana Altman. This is pretty good company. The great Henry Iba, you mentioned him, and Eddie Hickey. And Dana Altman third in Valley history in wins. Speaks volumes for, for what Dana Altman's done. The like guy said last week, the people that are ahead of Dana Altman, they named buildings after. <laughs> He said other than Warren Buffett, he's the biggest thing in Omaha, and he might be tied with Warren Buffett. <laughs> Hidmus fouling, Southern Illinois goes back to the line. You look at Randall Falker. Can't get over the job Chris Lowry has done with this team. They're young, no scholarship seniors. Falker's a sophomore, Young's a junior, Tatum's a junior, Shaw's a sophomore. We saw the freshmen and walk-ons and everything else come in this game. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Mitch, when, when they got things turned around, so when Chris Lowry moved his lineup, moved the freshman in, 
just said, run the show. And he's a very unselfish player, and he's a, defensively, he's very, very good. And he's, he's just what you want. And they went to three guards. Three guards, Shaw at Ford, and Falker in the middle. Change their season. Through the lack of a whole bunch of big men around college basketball, there's Watson and NBA three. We've seen teams with the really good guards play multiple guards and win. Villanova comes to mind. Votes for Fallon, 59-45. And now the score is going to get a little uh, misleading here. Thirty-three straight wins at home, 42 straight wins in the league. They've not lost in the league since February 24, 2001. <laughs> They're still counting hanging Chads in Florida. Evansville beat them. Four straight NCAA tournaments, and they've won in the tournament. They went to the Sweet 16 a couple years back. Last year they were one and one in the tournament. Gave Oklahoma State all they wanted in Oklahoma City before losing. And the other two losses were a last possession controversial loss to Missouri and one to Alabama by one. So this is a solid basketball team that Southern Illinois got on the floor. And they're going to be hard for anyone to beat because they defend. 61-45. Watts, nope. Matthew Strip Clements out of bounds to Southern Illinois. Let's go now to our Rawlings. Play, play of the game brought to you by Rawlings, the official athletic equipment of the Missouri Valley Conference, and it was Austin Brooks, not Aaron Brooks, he's graduated. A walk on Charlie. It's the play of the game. And that was a big play because at the time the game was very much in jeopardy and in doubt, and he just gets the steal on the on Porter's pass. And this is going to be clock time right here. We'll have Creighton on Saturday, another big game. They go home to play Wichita State. Creighton's undefeated at home. Nensu with the foul. Larry's clear in the bench, but it's not like these guys haven't played. They were all in there earlier, most of them were anyway, except Kyle Smith Peters. This kid made a big difference, and when he was in there at crunch time, Wesley Clemens. Clemens is just going to get better and better, I think, Mitch. He's got a great body, great attitude. He's just going to be a, he's going to be a very good player for his game. Sixty-one forty-five, Southern Illinois, one thirteen left in the game. Clemens free throws were much better tonight than advertised. Came in three of 11, four of six in this game. And the Creighton at 45 points, it bears repeating. When Southern Illinois and their wins in Valley play this year, it's a good league, fifth best conference in the country. They only give up 47 a game, Charlie. That just blows my mind. It is the 42nd straight win. An all time Missouri Valley Conference record in the 99th year of this league. Well, you got your second unit out there on the floor, running clock, doing stuff right. Smith Peters trying to get one for the Fidelts. Rebound. Hit the break. Southern Illinois student section giving its official goodbye. Bishop is five. But you got to give credit to Southern Illinois, Charlie. You come to Little Egypt, you better lace them up because the Egyptian dogs play big in Carbondale. They're real. Their defense is what makes their ball club, Mitch. But they do some things offensively that aren't bad also. But the defense is a real answer. 62 to 48. Congratulations to Southern Illinois. The all-time Valley home winning streak at 42 straight wins. 
and continuing on with the nation's longest home court winning streak 33 straight games one here in Carbondale Saturday Charlie and I are headed to Omaha to the beautiful Quest Center another big one Creighton will host this time they'll host Wichita State for Charlie Spooner I'm Mitch Holtis enjoy the rest of your Valley weekend.